Smell that? It's time for a swing dance reaction video. No. 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 Yeah! Hey guys, welcome to Street Smart Swing. My name is Jamin Jackson, also known as the Galactic Swing Dance Umpire. And I am super excited to finally get down to see this MXSDC 2020 Lindy Hop Finals. Are we ready? I'm ready. And here we go. All right, we are live. It's time to make history. No more games. Yes, my boy made it in the yellow. All right. <clears throat> yes, my other guy in the gray, he did it too. Awesome, 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 awesome. I'm glad he made it, yes. Ah, and she made it with the polka dots. See, I told you. I told you. All right, so I'm gonna be looking for my favorite follower and my favorite leader. I just gotta go that way in this competition. <clears throat> oh, and it's a live band too? Man, they sound great. Someone please let me know the name of this band because I wanna know if they have a CD so I can buy it. I collect a lot of swing music. Thanks to Andy, uh, Andre, is it Andre? Yeah, Andre for filming this footage or I wouldn't be able to tune in. I love technology, computers and science. It's great. He's like, I'm front and center, get ready. All right. <laughs> nice body roll, all right. Yes. <laughs> Excuse me. Huh. Yes, she went for it. It's like, hey, why not? Taking risk, man. I love that. Ho, oh, oh, here we go. Yes, yes. <clears throat> yes. <clears throat> Good musical phrasing. I like that. I could see the music every time uh, they would do something different. It was great. Yes. 
and walk it out and walk it out and walk it out and walk it out. Those are some fresh Adidas, I gotta say. I just now recognized it. Yes. And... There we go. <laughs> yeah. All right, what happens? All right. Yes. Nice, that was nice. <laughs> yes, yes. Alright, here we go. Just building up. Swing out. Uh, here we go. <clears throat> Oh boy! 
I love doing this. I love. I don't know. I love judging. With proper context, right? With proper tone context. I don't want to judge everything. I just like good swing dancing. And even that word, good, is relative. I'm talking about how I determine what's good, which is a very subjective thing. But there are elements in what I'm talking about that is good, that's universal to why everybody else would say good, right? <clears throat> so for me, uh, the finals, man, good, good job to everybody who made it to the finals because I remember seeing a handful of those followers and leads in the semifinals and I was just like hoping they would make it to the finals and they did so I'm not crazy all right so where do I start <clears throat> everybody had control which is that objective part every once in a while everybody would mess up on something and then do something with that mess up creatively and I like that it means that you're not just uptight and pretentious. This is this is something that is in a, a living dance, it requires ingenuity, and ingenuity requires a little bit of risk, calculated risk, right? And uh, I think everybody was doing that in a different way. So they all had control down, they all made some mistakes, and they all got out of those mistakes creatively. So where do I go from there? Well, I have timing, and then I have creativity. So, <clears throat> First off, I gotta say my my third favorite follower, and she was crushing it. She was doing all kind of stylistic stuff because following for me isn't about what you do to shine separately from what you're actually doing, right? People think if you're a good follower, you have to be doing a bunch of stuff in addition to what you're doing, right? What you're actually doing is carrying the weight of something that was initiated you're the response the call happened it's and the rest of the dance is about you responding to what just happened so i value uh following that i the sharing of the energy so when followers can just do that well i can tell i can tell they can do it well and there were a lot of the followers these top three followers could do it well um, some of them <clears throat> had more restraint some of them were a little bit more flashy. I will tell you, flash sometimes will cover up uh, the, the reality of what's happening. Sometimes you might be a little disconnected as a follower. You might be rushing to get to a point and a lot of flashy dancing or shapes on top of that might make it look like it's something that it's not, right? The leader's just like thinking, what's going on, <laughs> right? You know what I'm talking about. We've, we've all experienced that. But I can't say any of these followers did that a whole bunch. There were some moments where you could tell that they were disconnected and the followers filling it in with some fancy footwork and stuff. And it still looked good, but I'm sure there was, there was something going on in that relationship where they both knew something was up. So my third favorite follower uh, was the one who had the pink shoes on. The one I had the pink shoes on. What I liked about her is she knew how to fill in dead space. The dead space is when your body is no longer moving because of the energy and it's in one spot, right? Usually leaders connects or the leader initiates something, the follower will continue until the energy runs out or something changes. And sometimes when the energy runs out, a lot of followers who don't like to express themselves a whole bunch and they kind of expect to keep moving from rock step to the next rock step to the next direction change they just stand there when nothing happens right and she did not do that she she basically went out and did a split i did not even see that coming i probably would have yelled out loud as a judge and disqualified myself for excitement i i don't know judges should be able to be excited about what we're seeing this is dancing come on but i will tell you that split itself for me put her in third place just because it wasn't that it was flashy but it's she knew when to do it so that it would not disrupt what would happen next and that in itself is quality dancing so she got third place for me second place for me was the follower who had the tan jacket on wow she for me 
was special because her personality was showing in her dancing. She wasn't trying to uh, she wasn't trying to win me as the audience. She was dancing and I could see her quirky personality. I could see that all that coming out with the little head movements and stuff and sometimes you just can't fake that. I like I like when I can see the authentic nature of a dancer when they're moving, right? Wasn't that she didn't do anything technically that was out of control because most of these followers all had control. It was the fact that when she did embellish something, it didn't it didn't override the overall tone of what they were both doing. She didn't do that, right? So the leader, sometimes she was dancing with was a little bit more calm and her embellishments as she was sharing energy were calm and cool. And I liked that. It, it was telling me that she was not just trying to dance for the audience, like take my hand and then I'm gonna look at the audience, <laughs> right? No, she was first dancing with him. And I felt like that was taking place. That's what I felt. And that's what I fell in love with watching when I saw her come out in both sets. So great job. I already know who it is. I don't know anybody's names, which is better. But she was amazing. And then my favorite follower, uh, because she basically had both of those qualities that the second person and the third person had. <coughs> she had the most control for me. Where she didn't seem rushed. If the leader messed up a little bit, no problem. If the leader wants to embellish a little bit, no problem. She wouldn't just feel like, oh, I need to embellish too. Oh, you're doing something? I need to do something. No, she wasn't like she she wasn't acting like she was competing with her partner. And I liked that. But she had the qualities that the third place winner and the second place winner had. She had the authentic nature of who she was. She was I could feel by watching her, she wasn't just trying to win the audience. She was dancing with her partner. She was not rushed. And she threw in some creativity when the opportunity was prime. She did something between her partner's legs. Was I didn't even see it coming. I'm sure he didn't see it coming. Or maybe they practiced before. Maybe they're like partners. I don't know. But she went for it. She was bold. And it worked. Right? So those are my top three followers. So salute to all of you followers for repping it. I, I was hoping many of you all made it to the finals. She actually made it to the finals. The girl with polka dots. She had a uh, pink dress, blue shirt with dots on it. She was my favorite follower. And the other two were my favorite followers too for different reasons. They're, remember, we're, we're, in, we're in a dance that isn't just all about craftsmanship. It's not just about mastering something that's been done, right? This dance is living. So you have the balance of craftsmanship and you also have creativity, ingenuity. So they both work together. Like the rhythm section, right? Holds everything down so we can actually dance. And then the soloist kind of embellishes. It's the same in hip hop. You got the beat, and you have the lyricists on top kind of dancing around the beat. It's the same. You got male, you got female, you got all of it. The Lindy Hop's about opposites, and it's beautiful to see that. So big shout out to all the followers. So now let me get into these leaders because I like the leaders for some of the same reasons that I just talked about with the followers. My uh, favorite leader, <clears throat> let me see. Now let's start with my third place. Let me start with my third place. My third place leader was a gentleman that had the gray vest. Gray vest, uh, like reddish shoes. Yeah, he's my third place. The reason I liked him is because he had the control, but he also had really conspicuous timing. Like timing where I know the phrase is about to change and do something different. He was able to do that. Like it was so clear. If I put my headphones on mute, I know when the music's gonna change. And that's what I like to look for at a bare minimum is can leaders be aware of what they're listening to? Because we're not just dancing by ourselves. We're not just moving a partner. We're also moving in concert with the music. And hopefully, because there's an audience watching, we're able to make uh, artistic choices so that the audience can appreciate all aspects more. Firstly, you want them to appreciate what they're listening to. And if you can embellish that, like this gentleman did, that's awesome. That's like top-notch leading, right? So for me, whoever he is, he's amazing. Third place. Uh, second place for me was the gentleman with the yellow shirt. 
This is the one I called out from the first round. I thought he was he was my favorite um, to get to the finals. And in this particular set, he he convinced me. Yeah, he still belongs there. He still belongs at, at, in the top two ranking, and that's because of his control. And I like his choices to not do more than his partner, right? Whenever he was embellishing something, it was as if he was recognizing his role as a leader. And obviously, that's hard to do. You can lead things as a leader and allow the follower to move, but you can also be a distraction so that those who are watching you, we can't actually see what we're supposed to be looking at. Is it like you? Is this your follower? Should we be looking at our phones? We don't know, right? And so this leader didn't do that. He would start something and he would wait to see where it went. And then he would embellish something that happened after that. There was never this rushed sense of, I need to always be doing something that, to stand out, um, which is really disingenuous. It says that you're, you're not actually dancing with who you have. And I say that it's so important because look, I dance with some of the best dancers in the world and I can get what I want as a professional Maybe 85% of the time. <laughs> 85% of the time. That means 15% of the time something kind of goes wrong, right? Or something is a little off. And the temptation as a lead is to always focus on the stuff that's not right instead of just dancing with the person that you have and all of their qualities, all of their strengths, 80% of their strengths you're ignoring to get that 15% more perfection. And I don't do that, and he didn't do that. And that's beautiful to see. He's working with the follower he had, and he was able to embellish on top of that uh, without making it too uh, forced. Now, I will say there were some disjointed moments when maybe he was getting excited a little bit, and his follower uh, maybe took two big steps, and something happened. They were like, oh, we're about to like, like <laughs> do a DDT, I guess, right? They easily got out of it, but... In those little moments, it tells me someone was rushing. It was either the leader or the follower. And if it was the follower, the leader should know that that could happen. And that's based on getting to know each other when you're dancing. You should be able to figure out where those points are that you have to pay attention, right? Or the leader just got too ambitious. So I don't know, but I know what I saw. Now, my first place uh, person goes to the gentleman with the, the hat. He had the circle hat. I think they were the first couple to go out. The reason I like them... <clears throat> They had control, they had timing, but what I look for most is creativity. I first am looking to see who does not care what anybody thinks about how they look. <laughs> that is what I'm looking for. You know why? Because you can imitate that in the future. Future dancers can be inspired by that person. The odd fingerprint that doesn't fit anybody else's glove, right? That's the person who has some artistic creativity part that I like. Now, there's an extreme of that. Some of those people are just super extreme and creative, but they can't actually do the technique. This is not the case with this gentleman. He was able to work with his partner. He was able to control his technique. And he just decided, hey, look, my partner is more um, flamboyant, her personality. And he was able to figure that out very quickly and decided to be like, bam, I'm just going to stand right here. Here's my hand suggested to do something, and then easily went back into social dancing, emphasizing the timing, staying weird. That's, that's what Lindy Hop is about. It's not about just convention, and it's not about just rebellion, right? I think uh, particularly us as Americans that do this, we don't like people telling us what to do all the time, but yet in a way we kind of have this collective thought just to do what everybody tells us to do. It's weird. It's really, really weird. Uh, I call it group think. Don't do that. Just be respectful for the dancers that come before. And all these dancers have. They've actually mastered the dance. They're doing all the moves that have come from the 30s, right? But at the same time, they're attempting to add their personality. That's the part that got us here is individual expression. So I'm super excited uh, to have been able to watch MXSDC 2020. I'm super pumped this year to really turn it up a notch to be able to see who's that talent out there in the world that I would tell people, look, you need to watch this guy because they're dead serious about this art form. It's not a gimmick. gimmick. It's not a prop for social justice. They love this thing and they are going to make a huge mark 
on this dance and I'm super excited. So I'm going to be looking at everybody's dancing. I'm super pumped and every one of these dancers deserves a hand clap for me. Um, yeah, but gen gentleman number one, again, he had the circle hat on uh, and he had a dark suit. I'm not sure if it was black, but maybe like a dark blue suit. Anyway, and the band guys, please let me know who this band is. I love swing music and a lot of these musicians, they need support. So if they've got CDs and music, buy their music, guys. Buy it. It is not cheap to record music like that, right? Most people don't know about this music. They think, oh, this is the music you, you, know, you listen to on the elevator or at the Olive Garden, right? But the reality is, is these people love the music just as we do, and we are a niche market. There's six, seven billion people on the planet and maybe 100,000 Lindy Hoppers, maybe, and 100,000 of them aren't really serious about dancing, maybe 1,000. <laughs> even maybe a thousand and I'm being blunt so I encourage you guys be supportive of the people who are dead serious about this art form including these musicians and including these dancers so take a lesson from these dancers I would I would I wouldn't take a lesson but I would want to kick it with them and be like hey let's create some stuff in the corner hey you come to the dance tonight let's show up early and play that's what I would do as an artist so I encourage you guys if you're wanting to learn Lindy Hop reach out to people these people are dead serious about it and they will help you if you're at home and you're like look I don't have a scene there's nobody around me or I don't want to take a long time to get good at this check out some of my classes below I've got over 25 classes to kind of show you my way of focusing on Lindy Hop we get all the hard stuff out of the way and we zoom right in on the artistic part so that each week you can get new creative movements uh, if you want to skip all that and you're like, look, just show me a clear roadmap. What are the most important things I need to do so it doesn't take me years to master this, but just months, then check out my uh, my fundamentals membership. It's below too. That will really help you out. It'll give you the power to really kind of be able to fix yourself because that's important. That's ultimately what you're going to be doing when you go social dance. And I want to give you a good reference point so that you can always go back to that without having to have a teacher. So anyway, who do you think should have won this competition? I, I gave you guys my picks. I gave you my reasons why. It's my big, fat, bloated opinion. But hey, I'm a professional. I do this and I judge this. So this is just my perspective of it. And I'd love to hear what you thought, particularly if you're a brand new person uh, in the dance. I want to see what your perspective is. What did you like as a brand new person? Because I remember being new and not really knowing what was good, what was bad, but I knew what I liked. And I'd love to hear that too. So with that said, guys, I will see you in the next reaction video or in one of my classes online. And congratulations to everybody who performed in this competition at MXSDC 2020. I will see you guys later. Take care.